Hello, uh, good morning everyone. Um, very great uh, meeting um, before we start. But before that, um, so everyone got a Wi-Fi password here, right? Okay. Yeah, before we start, um, you cannot download the Tableau or download the data, please do so. And uh, I believe while you download, have you uh, make public? You'll be creating a type of public account at the same time. Yeah. Uh, just in case you don't have the URL, I'll just show you all. Yeah, um, so the version of Tableau we'll be using is uh, Tableau Public. So with this version, you can use it uh, for free without paying. But the thing is, um, all your data, all your visualizations will be shown online. You can't really keep it within your desktop. So make sure the data you're using is not sensitive and you are okay to share it online. Yeah, yeah so please uh, do download Tableau or download the data if you're not done. So, um, I believe the email was sent out for regarding the data. Just let me know if you need the link or the link for the goal which is shown here. Are you guys able to see my slides? Am I, if I'm standing here, right? Okay. So I'll try to move. So I'll give an introduction to data visualization first. Yeah, um, do you want to guess? Um, I'm not sure if you've got the slides already, but right? you want to guess the amount of data that was generated in 2010? Yeah, so uh, it's 1,200 exabytes. So on your on your on your that on your laptops you are using in terms of like gigabytes. So exabytes, I'm not sure is it like one million times or ten, one thousand million times of what you have on a desktop. And this is just in 2010 alone. And now uh, with this amount of data, which is why data visualization comes in, you have huge amount of data, but you don't know what's going on within there. And um, 
With data visualization, it allows you to understand what's within the data and also to share with others what the data you have. Because uh, yeah, it helps to communicate the data, essentially. And uh, why do we want great visualizations? Well, they do look nice, generally. Uh, but what's the purpose of creating visualizations? It's to help us answer questions that we have, or to help us make certain decisions about uh, based on the data that sets that we have. And also um, to find patterns within the data. Maybe, uh, there, maybe there are certain trends you might not have noticed, uh, which is why you need the data to help you visualize this information. And of course, uh, when you're presenting to stakeholders, presenting to the management, just showing them a Excel spreadsheet is not going to help at all. So um, you need to do data visualization to help you articulate your point, to help you present your argument. Yeah, um, so I'll just go through this quickly. Uh, this one of the visualizations was created in the 1800s. And uh, it's about a cholera outbreak in UK. So what happened at the time was that um, on the chart on the left you see the person called John Snow actually has plotted uh, out all the points where there were reported cases of. So all the dots re represent where people are staying, and these dots represent reported cases of cholera. Uh, without this high level pictorial overview, it's very hard. So no, what you, probably what you know is like, oh, uh, maybe my relatives, my friend, contact, uh, contacted cholera. But I can't really get a sense where are they generally located at. But with this pictorial view, you can um, sort of know roughly which are the areas, which are the main areas. Like for example, when we look at the Tanky outbreak currently, I think this is one of the examples, similar example as well, which are the areas within Singapore that uh, the hot zones for uh, mosquito outbreaks. So for this case, this was one of the first example where data visualization was used to help understand information. Okay, so from from this information, actually John Snow actually he came up with hypothesis that the pump uh, on Bot Street was one of the cause for this um, cholera outbreak. Because what he did was. Um, so he also made out where are the water wells within this name, this district. And he found that people who who uh, who got cholera, they were drawing from this particular uh, water well at Broad Street. Yeah. So from there they carried out the investigation and found that that was really true. The cholera was still okay back back then they didn't even know how the cholera spread. They, they didn't know what was it through air, or was it through water, or was it through food as well? But uh, they noticed that yeah, most people were drawing water from this particular well. So when they carry out further investigation, then they understand that water is actually the medium where cholera was spread through. Okay, um, so I will skip the. Uh, I went through the history and uh, the rationale pretty quickly. Now I'll go on to general tips for predicting data visualization. Okay, um, so like I mentioned earlier, so I mentioned earlier, um, so when we create data visualizations, there are many ways you can create a data visualization. Um, but you have to ask yourself first, uh, what's the objective of creating this visualization? Is it to help make a decision or is it to help spot an argument? This is important because this will help guide you in the kind of visualization you want to create. And ultimately, uh, yeah. And also, who is the audience for your, uh, for your presentation? And what do you want them to take away at the end of the presentation? Are you presenting to a management or are you presenting to experts or are you presenting to a public who are not familiar with your data set? So you have to cater to the needs of the audience before you create. I mean, you have to think about the needs of the audience while you're creating your visualizations as well. And uh, more general tips um, to keep your data visualization simple and uh, to use the right charts for the right set of data. And also, uh, what very importantly is to have data integrity. 
integrity. Because uh, maybe I will show you later in a while. Yeah, so these are some examples of uh, not so effective visualizations. Uh, for example, on the top left hand corner, you have a 3D pie chart. Generally, pie charts are not well received by people who create visualizations. One thing is because, um, for example, for this pie chart, you can't really tell what is the proportion for this uh, this particular this particular set. You can't have a sensing. Uh, is it like two times or three times? Like is the pink portion like um, how many? What is the magnitude as compared to the blue portion? You can't really have a sensing of that. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, three um, D charts are not very good because it's very hard to really uh, find out what, what's the magnitude of the variable you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, uh, so now let's don't disturb your charts. So maybe anyone want to point out what's wrong with this chart itself? Yeah, yeah. So so the, the scale doesn't start at zero, it starts at 170. So when you show this chart to management or at the audience, um, they might thought that you know, A is two times the amount of B when you present this kind of chart. So, so you are misleading your audience in some sense. Make sure, so try to make sure as much as possible that your visualization starts from zero at the y-axis. Uh, I'm using some terms here like uh, variables, uh, rows and columns, and uh, yeah, data fields. I, I guess you all have been through Two sessions of the data visualization uh, sessions. I believe you all have already taught these terms before. So let me know if you're uh, not familiar with these terms. I'll try and explain them. Yeah. Uh, next. Don't use charts which have different skills. Because, um, well, we can use two skills one on the left and one on the right, is okay. But make sure that um, they are not of different magnitude or of different scales. Like in this case, people might think that, uh, for example, when you're talking about spending against saving, it might be causing people to think that, well, I'm saving half of what I'm spending, which is not the, not the case in this, which is not true in this case. Yep. And also, um, I guess anyone who has taken statistics should know this. For example, I have a, I'm doing a survey, just a simple yes or no. And my sample size, that means I interviewed 100 people. But on my chart, I only show 30 people, 20 who have said yes and 10 yes said, said no. But in fact, 70 of them is not represented on the chart itself. So when people see this, make a decision based on this chart, the outcome will have been different if you show how many people who didn't respond. Yep. Okay, just to get a sensing, um, how is it so far? You're, you're okay with the pace and the content? Okay. Yep, uh, so next I'll go on to data types. So there are three main data types we have. Um, their names sometimes are used interchangeably, but generally they mean the same thing. Nominal or categorical. Uh, so normally these are variables, uh, for example, gender, and then uh, different types of fruits, different types of cars, um, stationary, whatsoever. It's just what you normally maybe I just use a loosely how you name the different items. They represent different so as long as they represent different things, they are generally different categories. So um second one will be ordinal. So ordinal is sort of um 
similar to nominal, the first one, but there's a ranking within the your know, variables. For example, exam, exam grades, you get an A and a B and a C and a D. So A is very much better, is the best. So there's a ranking within this, uh, these variables itself. If you're talking about apple, um, oranges, and pears, there's no ranking within these variables. So, yeah. But in Tableau, generally, um, the variables will, yeah, maybe I'll explain that later. And lastly, uh, we have uh, quantitative variables. So quantitative variables are generally, there's meaningful, th there's meaning between each of the measurement. For example, you're talking about height, one cm, there, there's a meaning to it. And generally, they, they are represented by numbers. But of course, numbers can be generated, I mean, uh, can be represented by uh, categorical or ordinal as well. So it's not strictly the case that all numbers are quantitative, right? So I've given some examples of quantitative, for example, uh, weight, temperature, and stuff. Okay, um, so when we have um, quantitative variables, yeah, uh, generally we try to uh, represent them using x or y axis or by length. Because uh, for position-wise, it's very clear when you have a variable, it's very clear what is the magnitude of this variable when you represent them on x or y axis. And also for length wise, why is it useful is because it's easy to compare the magnitude of different variables when you have them across the chart. For example, B is probably like one third or one quarter of A. Even without a scale, you, can't, you can give an estimate. So yeah, we try to uh, represent quantitative variables using position or length. So for um, nominal or ordinal variables, for example, you want to represent different kind of fruits. You can use um, different shapes or different texture or even um, sizes, yeah. But generally, I prefer to use um, colors. But of course, uh, colors-wise, when you have too many variables, it gets hard to differentiate between the different variables. Probably, you can go up to about 10 variables. Like you, want to uh, you can represent up to 10 kinds of different fruits. But when you have 50 kinds of fruits, using color may be quite challenging. So you have to think about that when, how you want to represent your data within your visualization charts. And color value, uh, we'll see an example of that in a while. But generally, color values, it's quite hard to distinguish, like maybe between the second and the, between the second to the fourth ver uh, colors that you can see, the second to the fourth blue. So, so that's not ideal as well. Yep. So. Generally, um, this, this uh, gives you a general sensing when you have categorical data, what are the different ways you can gen, uh, represent your data and, and so on. Okay, so I'll go on to an example. Maybe I'll have a look at um, this table. Okay, this is more of a software engineering table, la, people who are working in software engineering. So for example, in the first column, um, I'm not sure because I'm familiar with this data set, but do you all understand what this data set is talking about? No, OK. I'll try and explain. Um, Okay, so for example, uh, priority. I, I think you can tell from priority which are, uh, how t priority that means how fast you should uh, work on these, the things on the first column. I'll, I'll skip the first column for, for a while. So priority, that means uh, how fast you should work on it. Let's say if a car breaks down, 
maybe I'll use an example uh, in, a, in, a, in terms of car or maybe my laptop breaks down, broke down. And then I, I open a laptop repair shop. And then I have multiple customers coming in. Some of them tell me, okay, um, you can take two weeks to fix my laptop. You can, um, some of them tell me, you must fix for me immediately tomorrow. So that's the priority. And maybe um, other than doing laptop repair, I'm also helping my clients upgrade my laptop as well. So that, that is in the first column, features and bugs. So probably you can take that bugs are uh, like, uh, say the laptop, you have problems, you want them that needs to be fixed. And features are things that my clients want me to help with sort of upgrading. So features and bugs are very different things. Just like your apple and oranges, they are different. And also, um, the average effort, for example, that's, that's uh, the amount of time that I require to work on these different, say, laptop issues, for example, upgrading or uh, laptop repair. How long did it take for me to repair all this, work on this? So, um, yeah, you'll just think through, maybe i give you a minute to think through, how would you, so going back to your nominal, ordinal, and quantitative, which the variables are, where do they fall under? Yep. Just spend a minute to think through. Yeah, so I uh, understand that you can see the answer in the next slide, so try and think through first before you yes, go ahead. Or at least think about why is that a case? Yeah, because uh, when you have a data set, this is a similar. This is the first question you ask when you receive the data as well. You always need to think through which are the things. Like if I have a variable that are all numbers, are they really quantitative or are they um, your nominal or your ordinal data? You have to be aware of that. Yeah, so um, based on what I described just now, I guess you can, you can tell that um, entity type and priority, so entity type is categorical and priority is ordered. Um, the average effort for an average cycle, they are both quantitative. And the next example will show you how will this data be represented on the chart. Yeah. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, quantitative data, we try to represent them on the X and Y axis, so which is what we have done here. The amount of effort and the cycle time we put on the X and Y axis. And um, the different categories, for example, is it a laptop upgrade or is it a laptop fixing? We try to represent them using different colors, like generally in terms of red, blue, or green. And the intensity of the color, which is um, the color value, I think. Yeah, color value. So the darker the color, the higher the priority of what I should work on first. Yeah. And from this, actually, you can make a conclusion. The things that, the, the tasks that needs to be worked on, uh, for example, features, they generally take more effort and more cycle time. For the bugs wise, um, they generally take lesser effort and lesser cycle time. This is one of the sort of take away. Yep. Okay, um, next I'll go on to some examples of good visualizations that uh, I came across. Yeah, just in case uh, you can't see too clearly, um, you can click on the link and look at it. Um, 
Yeah, so this is uh, related to the recent uh, Britain voting. So from this, uh, you can very clearly see from a glance that which are the different parts in UK, how did they vote, uh, and yeah, how did they vote. And then also, um, other than giving a geographical breakdown of how the, the different parts of UK vote, they also give a bar chart to tell you in terms of absolute percentage, what is the breakdown of the voting. And also, the color intensity tells you how inclined are they towards the different decisions. One thing um, I thought could be improved will be probably similar to what Tableau can do when you mouse over each of these different regions. They can show you more information uh, about the different regions. Right now, this is, yeah, so in Tableau, we can do something like that. When you mouse over the different regions, you can give the viewer more information about what you want them to know about the different regions. I'll go on to the next uh, visualization. Maybe I'll play the video first. Just how fast was Usain Bolt's gold medal sprint? Let's put him on a slightly bigger stage and see him race against every Olympic medalist since 1896. This imaginary race, assembled using runners' average speeds, reveals just how much faster sprinters have become. A few lanes over, we see another Usain Bolt who dominated the field in Beijing in 2008. Almost 10 feet back, Carl Lewis, gold medalist in Seoul in 1988. He won in 1984 too, one of just a handful of sprinters on this track twice. As we go further back in time, we pass more of the fastest sprinters in history. Jim Hines, the first man to break 10 seconds in the Olympics. Jesse Owens, who won four golds in Berlin in 1936. Archie Hahn, the Milwaukee Meteor, who won three events in 1904. And finally, near the end of this track, we have Tom Burke, who won in Athens in 1896. His time, 12 seconds, puts him more than 60 feet behind today's winner. So what can we take away from this picture? For one, a lot of these sprinters are from the U.S. Although Americans have had a rivalry with British sprinters, and, more recently, Caribbean athletes. Nearly half of these runners are Americans. But we can also see the glory is fleeting. Repeat performances are rare. There's been a new winner on the podium in all but three Olympics. But to get a little bit more perspective, let's see how some of America's best young sprinters would fit into this group. Here are the fastest kids at the 100 meter dash at different ages, as recorded by the Amateur Athletic Association. Obviously, they're way behind today's athletes but they're not as far behind as you might expect. America's fastest eight-year-old did the 100-meter dash in 13 and a half seconds, which would have put him less than a second off third place in 1896. Not bad for grade school. And the record for 15 to 16-year-olds is a 10.27, good enough for a bronze as recently as 1980. Still, it's not like those Olympians were slow. Despite more than a century of improvements in nutrition, fitness, footwear, and track surfaces. The difference between today's athletes and the fastest humans of the 19th century? Just about three seconds. Um, go on further to explain about this visualization. So um, this chart it shows you very clearly um, the different win the different uh, pr prize recipients at the different Olympics, and um, why this is effective is because um, 
it shows you clearly who are the gold winners, who are the silver medalists, and who are the bronze medalists, without a legend to explain to you. And also, um, yep, and also it tells you which are the different countries, and they also give you a sorting of how the different countries perform within the Olympics itself. Yeah. And yeah, for this one, when you mouse over them, they can tell you um, how far behind they com uh, complete. I mean, how far behind they were when they, if they're competing against Usain Bolt, and the time taken they co taken to complete the sprint. Uh, I think the sort of visualization has already started. So, yeah, let me take a look first. <coughs> so yeah, what uh, what they have done is um, they created uh, the the line chart of how the temperature varies across the year, across the different months. And they sort of play the video to fast forward and show you how temperature has been generally increasing across the years. So yeah, this is a very simple illustration in if you want to bring about uh, information about global warming. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm done with my introduction. So just to check, is anyone have any questions or any particular area that you'd like to like me to cover more about? So we are good to start with Tableau. Okay, maybe you all open up the, the uh, data set that you all have that uh, you all have downloaded the data set. It's called workshop data. So um, everyone has opened up the data already? Anyone who is still opening the data? OK, um, so I'll give a quick introduction of what the data set is about. So before you visualize the data, like I said, um, you have to make sure that you look through your data set to understand what is it about. Um, one thing that I realized I did not cover in this is uh, data cleaning, which I'm not sure whether the last two sessions did they mention anything about data cleaning, data transformation. Was it covered? So, so I mentioned. So um, I downloaded this data set of the internet. Generally, it's quite clean. I did not have to do any, let's say, for example, it's quite common for data sets to, to for example, In this case, we don't really have any, this problem, but uh, for example, you're dealing with uh, survey data that you know you you pick someone else to help you collect data. Different people have different way of collecting the of inputting data. For example, uh, for example, I have a survey question. Um, I did not manage to get a response, 
Some people, when they input the data in Excel, they leave it blank. Some people put as NA, some people put as, uh, yeah, all sorts of, even NA itself, it can be N dot, A dot, it can be just NA. So this different, actually the, the, the different ways of inputting data still refer, mean the same thing. So you have to watch out for that when, uh, before you visualize your data. You probably have to clean up your data before you put them into your visualization charts. Because uh, like they say, rubbish in, rubbish out. What, when you, you notice a problem, if you don't check through your data, you definitely notice a lot of problem when you visualize the data. So, 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 um, you, have, you might have to go back to the domain expert or go back to the people who give, provide you the data, check with them, and then ultimately you have to make decision on how you want to represent the data before you put them into the visualization tool. So um, I'm not going to cover column D and E, so I'll just do a hide first, the whisker high and low. So yeah, um, so the data set we have here is the sort of happiness score. It was, um, it was, it was a study done to find out which uh, countries uh, have the happiest people. And yeah, the data set is already ranked by the happiness score already. So Denmark is one of the happiest country in the world. So that's uh, so the happiness score is under column C, and um, column F to column F to K. Okay, for example, um, explained by social support. So so how how did they generate this data set was that. Um, they ask, so they based on a question, for the happiness score, they ask a uh, respondent on a scale of one to 10, um, generally how well do you think, how happy do you think you are with your life? This is based on what I read um, on, the, on the report itself, yeah. I, I'll provide a link for the report, you all can have a look at the report itself. And then um, based on this, so for example, um, 100 people, in Denmark re uh, responded, and generally they got a s happiness score of 7.5. So based on this score, the what, they, what they do was that they try to uh, look at the social amount of social support. So they have other data sets as well, for example, the amount of social support people receive generally within this country. Um, this is... They look at the, the, the health expectancy of people within this country. They also look at um, the freedom to make decisions, make life decisions within this country. So based on these variables, they try to explain why do people rate um, themselves generally to be about 7.5 in terms of happiness rating. But of course, um, and then they try to have a, they start to standardize it, normalize it across the different countries. So, for example, if two countries have the, they give a same rating for social support, then the, um, these two countries will score, yeah, if two countries score equally well in terms of social support, but they have different happiness score, this value will be different for the two countries. And of course, there are certain factors that they are not. There, there are certain factors that they are not able to explain why this country rate themselves so well uh, in terms of happiness scoring. That is not covered under the columns uh, G to L, G to K. Sorry, it's uh, G to J. Yeah. So there are certain variables, that, there are certain things that they can't capture, so they put it under dystopia column L, dystopia plus uh, residual. So uh, one important thing when you, before you also create your visualization is you need to look at what do the different columns mean. You need to clarify with whoever provided you with data with before you visualize the data to make sure that you are representing the right thing. So 
yeah, so uh, we, we will start with Tableau. Please uh, start the run the software. Yep. So this should be the screen you have when you run Tableau. Anyone having problem running Tableau or so I'll, I'll, I'll proceed. Yeah. So the um, what we'll do first is to bring the data into Tableau, and you do that by clicking on Connect to Data. My slides already uh, show you. I try to show as much as possible the step by step. How do you do it? But also run a demo here. Yep. So you click uh, connect to Tableau. You, um, you select the file type that you want to bring into Tableau Public. So this is a uh, Tableau Public. If you are look using the paid version of Tableau, for example, um, Tableau Professional, I think you can import in more types of data. For example, I think last week you all had a class on MySQL. Um, if you have data sets there, you you can't bring them into Tableau Public, but you can do that for Tableau Professional. Yeah, so we connect to our data set under Excel, and um, just double click to bring our data. So if you manage to bring our data successfully, you should see the different sheets uh, in the Excel. Everyone sees, see this, right? And what we'll do next is, um, so OK, what we have here actually, I've got to mention, I have two spreadsheets inside my uh, Tableau, my Excel workbook. So we bring the first sheet. Then we bring the second sheet, which is uh, happiness. So repeat again. Um, you just click on happiness, this this sheet, and you just drag it to the white box at the top. Everyone with me? Okay. And uh, what Tableau allows you to do is to give you a preview of your data set. And from here, you can go directly to your data to start creating your charts. Yep. So you just click on, uh, so just on your here, right? You just click on sheet one. And from there, you can start creating your chart. Everyone is with me? Okay, I'll try to explain uh, what we have here on this screen. First, uh, firstly, I'll start with the rows and columns. For columns, right, if you think in terms of columns, actually it's similar to your x-axis, what you have horizontally. And uh, for rows, right, when you have different rows, they are represented by your y-axis. So whatever you want to put on your x-axis, you put under columns. Whatever you want to put on your y-axis, you put under rows. So just now we mentioned about quantitative data that you have, they want to put on x and y-axis, they will probably go under your rows and columns. Um, next, I'll explain about dimensions and measures. So the different columns that we have inside our data set earlier, the Tableau has already uh, based on its algorithm, it, it helps you to already categorize, it helps you to put them in the, under dimensions or measures. So for the nominal or categorical data and the ordinal data, 
generally they will go under dimensions and measures would contain your quantitative, quantitative data. But the system is not perfect. Sometimes um, you might have numbers which are actually dimension, which are categorical. What you can do is um, you can actually convert to dimension if you need to. But in this case, all the in, this, in our case, all the variables are really uh, classified correctly, so we don't need to make any change. But if you need to, this is where you can do it: convert to dimension or convert to measure, respectively. And um, okay. Filters. Filters is quite important. I'll come to that in a while. And um, you have your data source, which is shown here. Sometimes uh, within your your file, you might have you might be referencing from different data source, different spreadsheets, different Excel workbooks. So you might have multiple sources here. Later we we will get a, we will get to see that. Okay, so what we'll do is to create your first chart. Actually, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, before I go into that, I uh, forgot to mention the different no the notion of um, the notion of worksheet, dashboard, and workbook. So just now what we have seen earlier was the worksheet. This is where you create all your charts individually. You have your rows and columns at the top. You have your dimensions and measures on the left. This that, that's a worksheet you were looking at. And um if you turn think in terms of hierarchical wise, right? Worksheet is at the lowest level. When you go up one level, you go to the dashboard. Which is a combination of your different um, worksheets. Okay, we yeah, I'll go through that in a while. But at least um, I'll, I'll explain the theoretical, theoretical part of it. And ultimately, all your charts, all your worksheet, and your dashboards will go into a workbook. That's like your file that you store and access from your computer. So, so you need to keep in mind these different definitions: worksheet, dashboard, and workbook. Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, this is a worksheet. So this is where you create all your charts first. And um, why you have to be careful about this is because, so this is a worksheet, right? I'll show you what a dashboard looks like. A dashboard has different options. It doesn't have your rows and columns at the top. It doesn't have your dimensions and measures. So don't be surprised when you're looking at this, like where did, where did my rows and columns, why does it look so different? Because you're looking at a dashboard, so they provide different options as a worksheet. So we go back to sheet one, which is where your worksheet is. Next I'll mention about this uh, show me at the top right hand. So, um, okay, maybe I'll show you what you can do. So what you need to do is um, first select country, okay. and then uh, while holding the control key or the command key for Mac, while holding yeah control or command key, you select um, happiness score. Yeah, so I selected. So is, is everyone with me? So you have a uh, country and happiness score selected. Right. So on the right, um, you see that just now previously they were all grey out, but uh, once you have selected the variables, they light up. And what Tableau does is um, it proposes to you what are different ways you can use to visualize your data. But ultimately, you have to make a decision which one, based on your understanding of data, which one do you want to use to represent the data. For example, maybe I can use a 
bar chart. You can try clicking on it, no problem. So, well, yeah, I have a bar chart. Um, but I have so many countries. I'm not sure whether is it the best way to represent the data. If I click on, yeah. So you can click on this as well. This is a tree map. So you can click on the different way, the different uh, so called show me charts here. And you can determine which one is the best way to represent your data. So by this, you, this is one of the cool things about Tableau. Like, if you're not familiar with creating visualizations, this show me button is, uh, I mean, show me feature is very useful in helping you get a sensing of what chart is suitable. And you can test around and see which one is most suitable. Um, so for our case, yeah. Um, for everyone who didn't catch the question, so she was asking, for example, um, you have a map of Singapore, I mean you have data set that's related to Singapore, and then um, you want to capture within Singapore, how does your data vary, right, generally? So um, there are two parts to this question. One thing is Tableau, if you are looking at uh, worldwide data, if you are looking at uh, US data and a few countries, I, I can't remember the list. Generally, they have quite well developed maps for these countries. But uh, for Singapore specifically, they, from what I understand, you need to purchase a map. Yeah, you need to purchase a sort, sort of an add-on feature and put it inside Tableau so that um, you can easily visualize your data similar to what I have inside my slide, probably. So, but what I've done to circumvent that is um, you can actually import in a JPEG file. You can import in a, a static picture. And then you can still put in your lat long with your data set. And it can still help you plot out where your data set lies, where data lies. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll show you how that can be done in a while. Yep. So yeah, so, uh, so what I was saying is that if you're looking at specifically Singapore, how do they vary like within Amokyo, within Topayo, the different estates, right? Um, it's not as straightforward as what you can do with US and uh, other countries. Yep. Do you have any other questions? Okay, so uh, for our data set, so for the two variables I have, right, country and uh, happiness score, I will represent them using the geographical um, field map. Just click on it, yep. So you will get your first sort of chart over here. But, um, how are they rep representing the, the scale of happiness within this map? Anyone can tell me? Yeah, so it's a uh, color intensity. So I'm not sure if that's the... Uh, uh, yeah, definitely it's quite hard to see which country, like America, is it how much happier is it as compared to Asia or um, Africa or yeah, other, other parts? So what you can do, you can change how do they represent this happiness score within Tableau. And um, to do that, you go to, so, okay, so by default it's not shown. Uh, you need to be, after a while you get used to all these hidden features. It's not very apparent where are they. So if you mouse over to the top right corner of this happiness score, they call it, 
They call these different things cards, uh, like pages cards, filters cards. So we have this uh, happiness score card, right? At the top right corner, you can change how is this represented on the map under edit colors. So is everyone over here? All right. And um, the under palette, you can choose, for example, wh whatever color you think is good for you. So in this case, we use uh, red and blue. Okay, one thing to take note also is uh, when selecting the colors, right? Try to make them intuitive. Generally, red means not so good and blue is neutral. Uh, but don't use uh, red for the others. Let's say if I have... Okay, I can't remember. Let's say by default, your data set when a high value means good and a low value means bad, right? Don't use this kind of color scale because it's counterintuitive. When people look at the data set, they, they'll get confused. So generally, red means not so good. You don't want to use red when it's supposed to mean something that is good. OK, I'll, I'll cancel first. You can choose whatever color you like. Uh, don't have to follow strictly the, my choice of the colors. Oh yeah, so, so like I mentioned, uh, when you save this data set, it'll be saved online. So whatever you work on will be, can be accessed through online. So it's up to you. Do you really want to follow exactly my, color, my choice of color, my charts and stuff? So in this case, I choose uh, red and blue diverging, and I click um, OK. And from there, you saw have your first chart in Tableau that we'll be doing, working on for our project. Oh yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll just quickly run through what you will have by the end of this session. Okay, maybe I'll run through here. So yeah, this is the first chart that we created. And um, after which, at the end of the workshop, right, actually, for lunch, probably we can create a dashboard that has all these features. It's up to you what I just uh, yeah run through with you what I've thought is useful, but you can put in other more charts if you want after after you learn how to do this. So this is that dashboard. So other than uh, so when you highlight over, I mean when you mouse over the different regions, you highlight to you the different happiness score. If you wish to show more information, you can do that. That can be done by amending in the chart itself. And uh, this is a breakdown of the different metrics that contribute towards the happiness score of each country. And what I've done is also to create a Wikipedia link at the bottom. So for example, if I click on Australia, right, the Wikipedia link will change accordingly. And this score will change accordingly as well. Yep. Let's say if I click on Russia, so everything will change accordingly. This is what we will have before lunch. Yep. Any questions? This is uh, still within your Tableau Public workbook. So I mentioned you, you can see online as well, right? Yeah, so this is how, so this is through a URL, a public URL. This is how you look online as well. So it'll be similar to, oops. Okay, I think it's my.
yeah, I think having some issues with the uh, resolution. But yeah, you can do the same thing as what you can do inside the workbook as well. You can, yeah, the behavior will be the same. For example, uh, I'm not sure where is this. Okay, I should click on. So you get the same behavior as um, what you have in the book when you click on on the browser itself. The behavior will be the same. So my data set will filter, I mean my data set will render accordingly. The behavior will be the same. So next I'll go back to our Tableau workbook. We'll come back to our chart over here. So everyone have this something like this chart, right? Okay, um, So at the bottom, right, is the name of this sheet. So normally you should try to rename your sheet to something that is uh, intuitive, something that helps you. Because ultimately, the name of this sheet is going to be the name of your chart as well. And one important thing when creating charts is um, you should name your charts such that people know what you're talking about with the data set without you having to come in and explain. So it should be something in intuitive for your audience as well. So this is the title. So you can change the title or charge to something intuitive. So for my case, um, I've named it uh, World Happiness. Okay. Next, um, go on to create uh, a new chart. So to do that, um, you click on the new worksheet button that is at the bottom. Okay, click on the new worksheet button. You can drag around your sheet to arrange them. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I think I missed out something in my earlier chart. What you can do is also to create filters for your chart. So to create filters for your chart, okay, what I mean by filters, so you just follow what I'm doing first. Um, later you'll see what, what I mean. You, you click on country, and then you drag them, drag it to the filters shelf, filters card, yeah. So you just drag country to filters. And then what it's asking you is uh, which country do you want to filter in or filter out? In our case, we just click OK first. So, so you have a filter by country in your filter shelf. And then uh, you right click on it and you click on show filter. So everyone with me? So you have a sort of filter on your right of your chart. But um, this is also, so you have a lot of, yeah, there are too many, this is not the best way to represent a filter. And to do that, um, again, you go, you go to this top, so, so, so like I mentioned, sometimes the, the, the options are not very clear, you have to mouse over them and try and error. Sometimes I also don't remember where are the different settings. I have to try and error and try and find them. So at the top right corner, there's a downward button as well. You can change how you want to represent this filter. So what they have created by default is a multiple value list. What you can do is you can select uh, it to be multiple values drop down. 
Ok. In case, uh, I'm not sure, does your chart change to only show Afghanistan or something? Just make sure when what's shown here is uh, all, the value here is all. And what you can do with that is, uh, for example, if I click, okay, so, so by default it's all, right? I can click to just see a specific country, let's say Algeria. But uh, this is not so good because you zoom into the country, but you don't get a sense of where is it as compared to other countries. So to do that, you go back to all first. So uh, yeah, again, like by default, there's no option at this side unless you move your mouse around. So what I can do is um, to avoid the issue that I mentioned earlier where they zoom into a particular country, you click on fixed map that you have here. And okay, so I'll show you again. Let's say now I click on Argentina. It will just highlight where Argentina is without zooming in directly to Argentina itself. Yep, so we change it back to all first. Yep. Can you sort by, right now there's happiness index, can you sort by happiness index when it comes to food So Sorry again? Right now it's sort by alphabetical order. The filter, is it? Yes. Yeah. Can you sort by happiness index? Um, Unfortunately, I uh, think that they can't they can't sort you can't sort the the values inside your filter, yeah, yeah. But another a work around for that is um we will see that okay. So I go back to my the mobile I've created right. So let's say if you have a dashboard, um, I bet it my. So let's say if I have my dashboard, right? Um, I mean, as a book around, you sort of have a sorted view of which are the different countries already by happiness. So from there, you can uh, select which country you want to filter in or filter out. Although technically you, you are not fi sorting the filter itself, but at least you have some sensing. Yep. So, so this is within a dashboard, not within the worksheet itself. Yeah, so, so we are done with uh, this chart. We go on to the next chart. And uh, yeah. Sorry again? Yeah. Okay. So she was asking about legend. Um, actually, this is, the, this, is where the, this is the legend. You can move it to here. Um, Within the dashboard itself, right now the position are rather fixed, la. right? So, so this is the legend that we have. If you want to move it to within, are you talking about moving it inside here? You can do it uh, later when you have the dashboard. So, um, some of, some of the things you can only do it within the dashboard. Because ultimately, generally, you are presenting the dashboard and uh, not the chart itself. So in, in terms of placements of the legend wise, we'll come to that in a while when you're doing the dashboard. Yep. Definitely more questions. Okay, so I'll go on to create our second chart. So uh just click on a new new worksheet you have not done so and click on sheet two uh, Okay, maybe I'll, 
um, deviate a bit from how I've done inside my notes, but it will still achieve the same outcome. So what we do is to drag um, measure values, which is measure values, which is uh, under measures, to to the columns, measure values to the columns. So so this uh, measure values um, cut will show up. So by default. Everything within your measures will be put under here. The UI is a bit funny, but uh, what we want to do is to remove, what we want to do is only to keep those uh, measure values that we want to represent on my chart, on our chart. So for example, the whisker high and whisker low, um, you need to remove them from this measure value shelf. For example, you remove one of them, yeah. So as long as you remove one of them, then the bug, I'll, maybe I'll consider it a bug, I'm not sure. Then you can see the whole set of measure values. And you remove them by pressing the delete button or something, yeah. So you want to remove number of records and risk low as well. And what you can do is uh, you can arrange them within your chart itself. Maybe we will we'll, we'll see how, how that affects your chart in a while. And next, um, you drag countries to rows. Oh yeah, so this is a bit different from just now when you click on the show me button, right? Like just now by default, you don't even need to drag things from, drag things to your rows and columns or Marks. Once you get more familiar with Tableau, you don't really need to use the Show Me button as much as you need right now. Yeah. So I repeat again. Um, you drag the. Just make sure that under your columns you have these uh, major values, and under rows you have country. Truly, are you able able to see from your side? So everyone is able to see. Okay. Otherwise, you can follow the screenshot that I have inside my notes. Just make sure that you get the same, yeah, the same setting. And then um, next, you do what you do is uh, to drag measure names to color. From measure names, you just drag it and. Yep. Oops, I think I missed out something. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Sorry, um, just remove. Yeah, you need to drag the uh, major names like she pointed out to the rows. Is everyone, with, is everyone have this chart? Is everyone with me? So just make sure you follow your columns and rows the same and the marks as well. They're quite important. And you get the same chart. Anyone having problem with this? May I get a show of hand um, who is still trying to get the chart? I, I can come around. Yep. 
Yep, sorry, um, just now I forgot to mention what I have here. Um, so what I have inside my va major values is um, dystopia and the different explained by var variables. If you have lesser or more, it's okay, no problem. It's not going to affect your visualization much. It's just going to affect the, how it looks over here. But more or less, it's just, if you have more or you have less inside major values, it's uh, generally okay. If you have more or less over here, it's okay. But um, yeah. Um, well, I mentioned monks is very important. So right now, if you notice, I have this um, blue, red, and orange sign, right? What I've done is to distinguish my major names by color. Let's say if I, okay. Let's say if I drag my major names here, notice that, yeah, I don't have the red, blue, and orange thing, right, on the left. Because right now, I'm not telling Tableau that I want to distinguish my major names by color. There's no red, blue, or orange sign over here. So, so for example, let's say I, I drag it to size. It's, um, I'm not sure how. OK, maybe not. Because I'm not sure how, how Tableau will do it, but because like uh, major names is like a uh, categorical or uh, um, categor categorical or nominal data set, so it's just like how you want to distinguish between your different major names. So typically you use uh, colors to distinguish them, right? So everyone has this chart, right? Okay, uh, right now you notice that your chart is by default the sorting. How are they sorting your different countries is by alphabetical order of the name of the country itself. So what you can do is uh, to change the sorting of your chart by right clicking on country itself. You right click and then you click on sort. Right. This sorting will change the sorting of your chart itself. So, so you have this screen, right? One one thing is um you can change the sort order. Is it by increasing or descending, increasing or decreasing? We'll come to that in a while. Uh, firstly, we'll select what we want to sort it by. If you select alphabetical, it will be alphabetical of the country. The name of this, whatever is inside this variable, you sort it by alphabetical order. But you can choose, say, my country. I don't sort it, sort my country is based on something else. For example, happiness score. Or if you have other values you want to sort it by, you can choose them as well. Let's say I want to sort by continent. And then, um, no, doesn't make sense. Okay, so what what you should do is to sort it by happiness score, and then um, sort it by descending order. Okay. Um, because in for our case, right. Um, the data is not repeated. Let's say if I have, uh, when we go to the next data set, this aggregation makes a difference. But in our case here, I, I try to keep it simple. This aggregation wise, you choose sum or average is still the same. Even you choose like mini, uh, maximum, minimum is still the same. In this case, for this data set. Okay, um, maybe I'll take a look at your data set. I think, 
Okay, maybe I'll go try to give me a, a minute. I'll try to explain what. Yeah. Uh, that, that could be a few factors for this. Okay, but um, to come to your question, right, I'll, I'll try to explain. For example, in my data set, right, for my data set, right, um, each country there's only one row representing each country, right? Let's say if I have a happiness score for Denmark across five years. So Denmark is repeated five times in my data set, for example. You don't really need to uh, don't need to follow me for this part. I'll just show you an example. So um, I believe at about for a question, right? When we import in data, look, I only have a one data source. I, I think I suspect your, your data source is a bit different from what I'm using, but uh, have a look to confirm. So the most important thing is uh, to follow through this workshop properly. You need to make sure that your data source is correct as what I have here. So to, to explain about the summation and aggregation, right? So for mention for our case, if you ignore Denmark, right, all the countries are only uh, shown once in your entire data set. But let's say if you are doing a happiness survey score for multiple years, you have Denmark that is repeated five times, and each is for different year. So when you do the aggregation, right, um, Using a sum and average will make a difference. So a sum will take the total happiness score across the five years if you don't distinguish by year. Uh, but if you use average, right? So okay, so if you sum, this is the scoring you will have. They will show up as your happiness score. If you use an uh, average, it will show as 4.3 as compared to 21. So in terms of aggregation wise, when you have that kind of, this kind of data set where each country is repeated multiple times, the aggregation will make a difference. Yeah, so, so in our case, our data set, each country is not repeated. So using sum or average or minimum or maximum, there's only one score to refer to, so it won't really make a difference. But if you are using a data set, which I will show this use case uh, in the later part of my workshop, using sum and average make a difference. Yep. So uh, I'll check your data in a while. Anyone else have any more questions? Oh yeah, and um, this should be descending. Yeah, after that, uh, just click OK. So right at the top, it should be Denmark who have the highest happiness score, and so on. Yep. So.
So, um, what we do is to rename this worksheet again. So remember to uh, name it something intuitive. I'll, I'll name my matrix. Right. Rename my worksheet. And next, I'll be going on to dashboard, creating dashboards. Someone with me? Okay. So to create dashboard, right? Um, okay. Notice on the top left-hand corner, you have your different worksheets that you have created earlier. You can mouse over them to give you a preview of how the, the chart looks like in case you can't remember the names. So to create dashboard, um, what you do is to drag this uh, World Happiness Worksheet, in my case, and drag it to the empty space here. Okay. So I repeat. Um, You just drag this world happiness worksheet to your empty space over here. Then next, um, we will drag a web page. This is for our Wikipedia link that I've shown you all earlier. I mean, Wikipedia page I've shown you all earlier. You'll drag this uh, web page to the bottom, towards the bottom. You notice where you, while you're dragging it, where you position it is going to affect where ultimately the thing you are dragging, where will it stay? So I drag it to the bottom of my dashboard. And then for the web URL link, So for the URL is as shown. So what I've done is, um, in this case, because Wikipedia, how they show their different pages is by the naming of, the spelling of, the naming of each country. Let's say if your data set, for example, Singapore is just represented by SG, or Malaysia is just represented by MSIA then probably this won't work. Because right now, our data set, uh, it names each country correctly. So that's why, for example, uh, if I click on, if I uh, have Singapore, yeah, so what happened is, uh, because we, our data set, we name each country correctly. So when I click on a, a country, for example, Singapore, just now what was shown as a country will be changed to Singapore accordingly, changed to Malaysia, or changed to other countries accordingly. Yeah, this portion will be changed accordingly to each country that you click on. So this is, which is why it works in our case. But if you have data set, if they spell the country differently, then probably need to do some conversion or something to change the naming of the country for this to work. So this is the URL that you should put in for, for the workshop. Country, so it's country um, surrounded by the greater than and the smaller than signs. Okay. And click on OK. Um, Yep, right now it's still empty, don't have to worry about that first. Okay, so what we want to do is, uh, right now it's not utilizing the, right now our dashboard, there's still a lot of empty space over here, it's not utilizing our screen estate properly. So to do that, right, um, first you click on any empty space 
in the grey area. Okay. So, so let's say if I'm clicking here, you notice that this right now is called World Happiness. If I click someone else, it should show as dashboard. So dashboard is what we want to have over here or the, at the bottom left. And then from here, you can change the size of your dashboard accordingly. You can um, use the default settings. Let's say if I use a size laptop, then you change to a laptop screen size accordingly. Let's say if I have a lot of charts I want to show. If you have a lot of charts you want to show, you can change this uh, height and width accordingly. For example, I have 1,200. So what happened is uh, Tableau allows you to do that, but uh, you have to scroll to see your charts. So it depends on what you need. So in our case here, I will use a uh, laptop. Yep, I'll use, uh, for example, laptop as a size for my dashboard. Okay, uh, so what we'll do next is uh, drag our other chart that we have created earlier, matrix. We'll drag it to the right. So notice that uh, Again, the green area will let you have a preview of where the chart is going to be. You want to put it at the bottom right hand corner or the top right hand corner. So I'll put mine at the top right hand corner. Everyone with me so far? Okay, right. Um, So what you can do is to adjust the size of your, right now because it's on projector, it's a bit different from what I saw. But you can change it, change the size and adjust the charts accordingly. Probably use. You can change the size of your chart accordingly if you want to customize them. Yep, to suit what you need. And just now the lady asked about the legend. Yeah, legend that we have over here. So to bring your legend into your chart, if you want to have it at the bottom right hand of your chart, what you have to do first is uh, right click on the legend itself. Then you click on say floating. So now you can move this ledger around and put it inside your chart. Let's say if I don't put it to floating, right? So let's say it's, so by default, instead of floating, um, instead of floating, right, if I try to move it, it will sort of force you to reserve some space for it. So. But typically what I do is um, I draw all my charts first. I created all the charts that I want. Then I deal with the legends and the filters because charts are the main thing that you want to show inside. Okay, so in my case, um, I will still, because um, yeah, in my case, I will still keep my legend on my right. But if you want to put it in your chart, you can do that by I mentioned right clicking on floating first and then dragging into your chart. Okay, um, yeah. Yep, uh, so everyone is able to follow. Yeah, okay.
We still have way through our dashboard creation. So some of the questions that you have I'll answer in a while. Yeah, we go, we're coming to that in a while. Okay, uh, before, before we go on further, right, uh, one important thing is um, right now, okay, maybe I'll go through something else first in a while. Uh, So typically, right, uh, inside one of my references, uh, inside one of my reading materials, you can go to the Tableau public. And they have a lot of charts there that you can get ideas from them. How do they do different things? But typically, when well, so you can download the chart and you can open the workbook itself. But typically, what they do is they hide their worksheets. You can't really see how do they they will just show the dashboard, but they will hide your other worksheets that they have inside. So to see the worksheet, right, you click on this, go to sheet. It will help you unhide the worksheet that they use to create the visualization, and they bring you to the chart directly. Even if it's not hidden, this feature is quite useful. The go to sheet button that is at the top right-hand corner. You can, can go directly to the chart itself and then make, make changes if you need to. Okay, so so a few of you asked about the Wikipedia link, right? I'm coming to that. Okay, um, so next what we'll do is to, at the top, there's a dashboard. And then um, click on actions under dashboard at the top. So this is what you will have. Click on, um, uh, sorry, repeat. Uh. Click on dashboard, actions, you have this. So what you do is to click on act action, okay? And then uh, first we'll create filters. So click on Act Action and Filter. And then from here, you can change the name of a filter. But OK, so so you have seen, uh, so what, what's, what's filter? Filters are those things over here that, um, actually inside Tableau is a bit confusing. There are different filters. You have filters uh, on the right here. You are using it to filter your data and stuff. Okay. But okay, so so I've also shown you uh, another form of filter, which is by clicking on this country, you are filtering the data, other data sets, right? So, so what I've done is that when I click on Australia, then I filter my data within this chart. So what I'm going to show you now is so right now you click on Russia, right? This chart doesn't change. So what I'm going to do show you is so how to how do you create this filter action, which is through dashboard actions, act filter. So for example, okay, so you follow my settings. Um, for the world happiness one, the one with the world map, you only check that one. And then you uncheck the matrix one. And then, so this is under source sheet. And under target sheets, um, under target sheet, you just check the matrix chart. So essentially what this means is that um, I want to use my world happiness worksheet to filter what is in my matrix. This is what you are doing. And then, um, you will run this action, run this filter based on when you click it or when you right click a menu. So we will select uh, select. Okay, this is under this uh, select. 
And then what they ask you is, uh, let's say if I click on Australia and I click on it again, what's going to happen? And uh, you click on show all values. So if I click on Australia again, it will unfilter what I've previously filtered. And click on OK. And right now, I'll create a, so OK, I'll show you first. So if I've done that correctly, let's say if I click on Russia, this chart should change accordingly. So it'll show only Russia. Click on China, it'll show accordingly. Does everyone have that? And by right, if I click on China again, it'll show me everything. By right, you should have this. So next, I'll go on to add another filter. I'll add a second filter, add action. So right now, I want to use my matrix chart to filter what is in my world happiness chart. So you follow this setting. Oh yeah, and yeah, so this is a setting you have to follow to do that. Okay, so once you uh, have created this filter, okay, right now if I click on Denmark, this one should show me where Denmark is, where Switzerland is, maybe I try and find, okay, Canada. So if I click on Canada on my matrix worksheet, this one will change accordingly, okay? And okay, next, uh, lastly, I'll go on to configuring the Wikipedia link. Okay, uh, before I go to the Wikipedia link part, right, I notice that. Um, Okay, right now, if I use my filter on the right, if I click on, say, Afghanistan, this is not changing, this is not changing as well, right? So we need to configure such that everything is interacting correctly. So to do that, right, um, you click on the downward arrow under this country filter. I notice some of you, um, your filters are missing and stuff, right? Um, does everyone have your filters on the right as shown here? This filter you have, right, everyone? Let me know if you don't have this filter. You don't have this filter. Okay, if you want to get this filter out, right, just make sure uh, under your world happiness chart, this filter is there. So you have to go back to creating this filter again. Then, so you drag your country to this filter again. You right click and edit filter and then show, I mean, sorry. And you right click and show filter again. Then you have this filter on the right. You just make sure that your worksheet has this filter first. Then it will show up on your dashboard. Okay, I think uh, some of you mentioned that uh, although you have the filter in your worksheet here, but it doesn't still show up on your dashboard, right? So if you want, so another way to get it on your dashboard is to check under, let's say my work happiness, I have a filter by country. I have a country filter that I want to use. You go to the top right hand corner, um, you click on filters, and then make sure that this is checked. You need to make sure that this is checked so that you have the filter showing up on your dashboard. And in case you, in, let's say for some reason you remove the legend, you can add it back here as well. So where this setting is, is under this top right -hand corner, this down arrow thing. Make sure that filters country is checked and legends is checked as well. Okay.
actions, okay. So, um, just I didn't rename it, lah. But is it, is this what you're talking about? World map, using the world map to filter your matrix chart. It still doesn't work. Do you select this? Um, make sure that this is selected as well. Okay, I'll come. Um, I think you need to make sure that um, under your actions, right, you have the same as what I have. If not, you cause a lot of very strange behavior. But you should only have two filters over here. If you have more than two or less than two, the behavior might be di different from what I'm showing over here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think just now I was going through halfway. Um, I think we may overrun for lunch a bit. But yeah, I was showing halfway. I was saying that um, if I filter my country over here, right, Algeria, this one doesn't change accordingly. Angola, this one doesn't change accordingly, right, for matrix chart. So if you want to enable that. If you want this to change accordingly when you select this, because actually what's happening is uh, right now this filter is only for this chart, but this is not filtering for this chart. The filter came from this chart. This is where we created this filter, right? So right now it's showing the filter for this chart over here. But if you want to filter this chart also, what you can do is um, you click on the downward arrow again, and then you select um, apply to worksheets. Okay, and then you select um, selected worksheets. And over here, you can select um, which worksheets you want this filter to apply to. So right now, I'm going to select a matrix as well. So by default, the by default one will be shown will be tick and shown as shown in grey. And then I can select other worksheets that I want to select, like matrix. Okay. So right now, if you've done it correctly, um, if you click on, let's say, Afghanistan or Albania, it should filter both charts at the same time. Everyone okay? Oh yeah, um never mind. Yep. Okay, lastly I'll go on to the Wikipedia link. Just now it wasn't working correctly, right? I mean right now it's still not working correctly. So to to get it to work, what you have to do is uh go to the dashboard again, go to actions. This is for your Wikipedia link at the bottom I mean Wikipedia page at the bottom. Actions, and then you click on ac action again. You click on URL this time. Okay. You click on ac action URL, and then um. Oh yeah. Okay. This should be the correct place. I think I I show you. The URL link at the wrong place. I'm not sure where it affect. But this should be the correct place to key in the URL just now for the Wikipedia page.
Yeah, sorry, um, I forgot to allow you. Yeah, but you got to type this in the URL. Make sure it's the same as what I have. So you can test the link to make sure it's working. So for example, right now I think the first value is LG, which is why it's showing. But if you test the link, it should show you the page correctly for one of the countries. If I just type in correctly. So this is a, this country is a variable name. So you should change this according to your variable if you have a different data set. Click OK. Oh yeah, um, you need to make sure that this is set to select. Just not by default, I think it was menu. You need to set on select and press OK. And then, yep, it should work. Let me check. Yeah, do you all have problem? Everyone got a Wikipedia page? No. Okay, I think just earlier I, I made a mistake. I think you need to leave this blank first. So you leave this. So instead of typing the URL here, you should leave this blank. Press OK first. So by the, so to start with, if you're having problem, this should be blank instead of showing you a bad bad link. This should be blank. And then you go to dashboard actions again, and then you edit this uh, hyperlink action. You should only put the URL link here. Maybe try again. It should work. And make sure that this is select and rather than menu or hover. Make sure it's select. And when you test the link, it should work. And yep. if I click on one of the countries here, it should work as well. Yeah. But uh, before I go, everyone else is, your Wikipedia page is working correctly? OK. Yeah, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So um, I think we'll start now. Yeah, but, um, based on some of the feedback I received, um, I realized that um, for this filter on the right, right, right now if you choose it, the wiki page doesn't change. Um, I'll let you know if I manage to find a way to get it to change as well. Of course, it's still. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. It's not is it. The. Oh. You're talking about um, the hyperlink one, right? But mine is on select as well. You're talking about this one, right? Yes, and with this, it works. Mine doesn't work, so I'm not sure. Sorry? Oh no. 
Okay. Um, before we proceed further, please do remember to save your dashboard that you've just created. So to do that, um, so to do that, um, click on File, Save to Tableau Public as. Yes. So I encountered a bug where on the first time you click on this, it will show sometimes, um, so it allows you to choose your name of the file, but sometimes it will tell you an error, say that it couldn't save. You just need to try one more time, then yeah. So this error that I always encounter. So you just need to try to save it one more time. Then it will require you to log into your Tableau public account, which I mentioned you should have created. Otherwise, you can create now. And after you save, um, it will show you this. Uh, you will create a new page and then show you this on the Table Public website that you can access through public URL. So did everyone manage to save your file? Okay, um So next, uh, we'll go on to create um, another chart. But before that, um, instead of clicking on this uh, new worksheet thing, right? What uh, to create a new chart? What I'll do instead normally is um, to duplicate an existing worksheet that I have. Why do I do that? One thing is, um, if you see when you click on new worksheet, right, your filters are not there. But sometimes uh, you have already preset some filters that you know you want to be applied to your new worksheet. So generally, I find it much easier to just duplicate a worksheet and then remove away those. Just make sure you are working on a new sheet and remove away those things that you do not need. But you still keep your filters because uh, unless you are looking at. If you want to uh, the same filters to apply, uh, generally it's much easier to just duplicate rather than to create a new one. Yep. So okay, um, wait. Uh, I think mine is a bit different.
I think this is the only filter you all have right now, right? This is what you all have exactly. With these filters and this only the country filter. Right? Everyone with me? So uh, what I'll do now is um, I want to create a chart that just right now if I create any chart, right, it's going to affect the rest of my visualization. I want to create an independent chart. So what I'll do is um, right. Just now we remember we use this uh, apply to worksheets filter, right? Now I only want to apply the filter to this worksheet. I just want to create an independent chart that um, I want to use later for my storyboard, but um, it's not really related to your matrix or your world happiness chart. Yeah. So just make sure that um, for this new worksheet that I've created, right, the applied to worksheets is only applied to this worksheet. Yeah. And then uh, we will rename this. So I'm trying to create what I'm trying to create is a uh, top ten Asian countries chart. Yeah. So I rename this chart to top ten Asian countries. Yeah, so I want this chart to contain only the top 10 countries within Asia that is ranked by happiness. So uh, to start off, maybe you can try to create on your own, based on what I've uh, taught earlier, try to create a chart that is showing the top 10 countries in the world ranked by happiness. Try to create a chart for that. Maybe I have uh, about five minutes for this. Okay, sorry, I'll make a mistake. Um, I think it's much, what I want is, so what I want actually is, uh, right now this matrix chart, right, contains all the countries in the world, but I want to create a chart only consisting of the top 10, but of course I want to create it based on a new chart. Okay, so I'll remove this. So I'll delete just now this worksheet that I've created first. I'll repeat myself. Um, so right now, I have, the sh I have, the, I have duplicated a worksheet that's all the countries in the world, but I only want to filter it down to the top 10 countries in the world. So rather than showing the list of 150 countries or something like that, I only want to look at the top 10 countries to show up here. So, so I'll show you how, how do I do this. So we click on, um, right click on the country, on the rows. And then um, we click on edit filter. And then under edit under the filter, right? You click on uh, top, and then you uh, select by few ten. And click on OK.
So give me a minute. Let me check on my. Yep, um, so just now I mentioned, you can just go click on edit filter, and then uh, we click on top, select uh, top 10, and need to select the happiness score. So what this is doing is, um, yeah, as, as, as it explains itself, yeah, you just want a top 10 based on happiness score. Of course, um, if you want to look at uh, GDP or health expectancy, you can do that as well. So you can select, what what's the top ten or even top twenty for the variable that you want to look at? So in this case, simply I'll just put top ten. So it's everyone with me. So if you scroll down, you should only see ten countries. Um, I forgot this sort. So if you scroll down, you should only see 10 countries within your chart, right? Does everyone have this? Just 10 countries. So uh, what I mentioned earlier, we want to look at top 10 countries, top 10 Asian, top 10 countries within Asia. So we only have top 10 countries in the world. So how do we get top 10 countries within Asia? So how do we get top 10 Asian countries? Do we just say put in the filter like this? Then do I just select Asia? Let's say if I just put in my continent. So within my continent field, I have all the different continents. So I just select Asia, and I want to filter my data set by Asia. So does everyone have this? If you have this, then you are following correctly. Yeah. If you have a chart, that means, <laughs> yeah, I think it means something. So what's happening here? Um, okay, I'll explain using my slides. So by right, if you want to look at top 10 countries by happiness within Asia, this should be the chart that you have. But we're not getting this. Why is that so? If you notice over here, this Asia is gray out. OK. This is a add to context uh, feature within Tableau. And what does this mean? So um, it's quite. Quite quite lengthy over here. This a uh, this a uh, tableau's explanation of what is add to context. So if you ask me in my own words, how, how would I explain it? Not everyone. Uh, I guess not everyone here is a uh, math background or engineering background. But to me, this okay. This I think like say you learn sets in high school, right? Sets. So there is a superset and subset. So this big circle is sort of the superset. This small circle is the subset. So when you first apply the top 10 countries filter, right? actually within the top 10 countries in the world, there's no Asian country, which is why that means this A, there's nothing inside. But right, if you do according to what you did, so um, if you use the add to context and you do it for Asia, what you're doing is uh, you are grouping, you are getting all the countries with, uh, which are within Asia. So you're forming this superset first. And then you're, so you do this by using the add to context first. 
So you're telling Tableau, that's what you want to do. And then from there, within the Asian countries, you want to pick up, pick up the top 10. And from there, you can get your top 10 Asian countries. But when you write this top 10, uh, you don't add the context for this one. OK? I understand this is a bit confusing, but uh, yeah. So the top 10 Asian countries is actually a subset of all the Asian countries. But of course, um, let's say within your top 10 countries in the world, there's an Asian country, then that chart, it will, will show something. Because right now, there's no country within the world that's within the top 10 for happiness, so that's why the chart is blank. Okay, let's say if I'm using, so just now I'm using Asian as a context, right? But we have some countries within Europe which are within the top 10. And uh, let's say I want to know which countries are within the top 10 in the world and they are European countries. And then in that case, you will do add to context for both Europe, the continent Europe, and uh, countries top 10. But in this case, you may not have 10 countries because you are, you are applying two set of criteria on this, uh, on what you want to see. Maybe in the top 10 countries in the world, there are only three European countries. So in your chart, you only show three countries. OK, uh, so to summarize, um, if you are doing something like what I mentioned, the subset and superset thing, right? Um, you will add whichever is a superset to context, while you leave the other one out of context. And um, otherwise, typically, for most cases, for my case, right, I will add all the filters to context. And if I don't get what I want, I will just play around with the context filter. So I understand it's a bit hard to understand, but I mean, yeah. But uh, I, I can't find a better way to explain this. this is, yeah. Okay, so going back to our data, right? If I want, so I mentioned, I want to look at top 10 countries within Asia. So within Asia, Asia will be the superset. And I will add this to context. So it's uh, directly on a country, and then there's this um, add to context thing. From there, you can get your top 10 countries within Asia. Let's say if, um, back to just now my second case where I mentioned, uh, if I look at s European countries, right? So, but right, I should see some European countries if I do this. So instead, if I change this to Europe, I should see. Yep, you have uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, about, about five countries, I think, five or six countries, but not ten. These are all the countries which are within the top ten in the world, and they are European countries. That's if you don't add to context for Europe. But if you do that, uh, add to context Europe, then you look at the top ten countries within Europe itself. Notice that Belgium is here now, right? So if I don't add it to context, you will not see Belgium. Yep, Belgium is gone. So it depends on, you have to ask yourself, do you want to see top 10 countries within Europe itself, or is it a superset and subset relationship, or is it an in intersection relationship? This, go, yeah. Sorry again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's either add to context or don't add to context. There's only, I don't even know why they call it context. Uh, what does context mean in this case? 
situation um, so maybe another way to explain it is add to context of Europe add to context of Asia something like that okay so everyone managed to get this um, everyone managed to get this right the top 10 countries within Asia so next I'll go on to work on uh, another data set so um, to work on the other data set right you go back to your data source at the bottom left hand corner click on data source similar to how you brought in data just now Okay, so uh, you have to take note to be very careful on this because uh, typically your data source are from different workbook. But right now, the data source that I want to bring in is in the same workbook. But uh, please follow closely to make sure, yeah. So uh, what I'll do first is to click on file, uh, you know, click on data, new data source. You click on Excel again. Essentially, I want to bring the same data just now. I'm trying to bring the same data source just now. But actually, the data is... The data I want to bring in is we need the same workbook as the data set we're using just now. But I'm not trying to do a join. I think you all learned join in the last class, right? But right now, I'm not trying to do a join because if you do that, that will mess up your visualization earlier. So I don't want to join my data. I want to bring it as a new data source. So what I've done just now is I repeat um, data, new data source. You select the workbook uh, workshop data. And then um, you bring in the base data worksheet. Okay. So by right, you shouldn't see a happiness worksheet over here. If you see it, then please remove it. That should be just be base data in this field. Okay, so uh, just briefly explain. So this base data, right? So I mentioned earlier, uh, the researchers, they give some scoring, for example, for GDP, uh, social support and stuff. They give some scoring. This is the raw data. Okay. We won't be using all of them, but um, but what is different from the previous data set you have to uh, take note is, for example, Afghanistan. I think earlier I mentioned um, in the previous data set, Afghan each country is only repeated once. I mean, uh, it's only uh, seen once within the, uh, in within the data set itself. But in this case, Afghanistan, for example, 
is repeated multiple times across for different years in the data set. So that will actually, um, yeah. So you have to take note when you are creating the data set later, which I will spin. So uh, after you bring in the data, right, you click on new worksheet again. Maybe I'll just show, um, okay. So now you have this worksheet, right? Make sure that um, the data source, so the data source I mentioned is shown on the top left hand corner. Now you have two data sources. It gets a bit confusing when you have two data sources. For example, country. I have country here and I have country here. So you need to be aware which data source you are selecting from when you are creating your charts from now on. This will happen quite frequently next time when you work on your data. So make sure that you selected the base data data source for this uh, chart. And when you have, yeah. So what I'll do now is um, try, I will show you another feature of Tableau, which is uh, create calculated field. And the calculated field that I want to create is GDP. Right now what we have inside the raw data is the log of the GDP. So I mean, uh, so in layman's term, a mathematical function was applied to the GDP, and I want to reverse it to get back the original GDP uh, for each country. So to do that, um, you right click on this log GDP field, and then um, you click on create calculated field. So what we are doing here is sort of writing some sort of coding. Uh, but this is still quite simple ones. I'm just doing some mathematical conversion to to uh, to the log GDP field. I want to create a new column. Right now in my data set, right now in my data set I have this, uh, Right now in my data set, I have this log GDP uh, per capita field. What I'm trying to do now is to create, you can, of course, what we, uh, so what I'm doing in a while, you can do it back in Excel, you can do it in MySQL as well, it's the same. This is what we call data transformation. Sometimes you have some fields, but, um, yeah, you want to convert it to a new field that is useful for your analysis. So for example, right now, I'm trying to create a field called GDP, but I'm doing it inside um, Tableau. Yep, so you can do, you can do the similar thing in uh, MySQL in Excel, but right now I'm showing you how to do it in Tableau. So basically, what I will do is uh, take the exponential of this view. So okay, just type in what I'm showing you on the screen now. I think uh, in my slides is slightly more complicated. This looks slightly more complicated, but. Um, for simplistic case, this, this will suffice. You just uh, type in exp bracket the log GDP field, which is in orange. Um, yeah, I think one good thing about Tableau is um, you just need to type in the first few uh, first few letters of your the the, the field you want to work on. It will help you generate the whole entire thing. So just type in this uh, exp, and then the field log GDP, and a bracket at the back as well. And then you, you press OK. Does everyone have any problem with this? So if you've done this correctly, right, 
um, you will see this GDP feel. And notice that um, it looks slightly different. Uh. Like normally it's just a hash for the normal ones, right? But this one there's a equal hash to indicate that it's a calculated field that you have created. Okay, uh, maybe I will show you a simple case of, yeah. What you do is uh, you create a simple map like what we have done earlier. Just click on GDP and click on country and create the, f the, the, the field map as what we have seen earlier. Okay, so for example, Russia, right now you see Right now, you see the GDP is 22,000. But um, it's not correct. Why is that so? OK, so what's happening is that they are using some. Like, and like I mentioned, um, in your data set, right? Each country is repeated multiple times. So, for example, if I use Afghanistan as a case, as a as an example, right? What it will do is, uh, it will sum out the GDP. For example, so just about the chart will be showing is a summation, which is this value. If let's say I select. It is showing a summation of the different years for each country. So you have to take note when you create your chart. Because by default, um, Tableau automated for you to sum them up. Do you want to take the average or do you want to take a particular year? It depends on your needs. So for example, if I just want to look at a particular year, 2014. So right now, this Russia value is 22,000, right? If I create a filter, if I create a filter and just look at 2014, <coughs> so if I create a filter and just look at 2014, the value is going to change. So take note. Sometimes it's not very apparent. It might make mistakes. Yeah, unknowingly. This, uh, yeah. So, like I say, this happens when your data set, like say, country or whatever thing, like say, Apple, Apple from different countries, from I mean, the Apple uh, price for different years. Then, are you talking about for a particular year? Are you talking about the average across five years, or are you talking about the the price of Apple uh, summing them up? It's all different. So uh, just now I show you the calculated few, right? Sometimes um, you might make mistakes. You're not sure. You need to check your calculated few. How do you do that? So so I'm uh, working on this data set, right? Base data. You right click on it, and I click on view data. So yeah, if I created it correctly, you can find the few that you have created within this view data, and you can check the values here correctly. You do a calculation offhand to make sure you have done it correctly. Quite often, if you make mistakes, this will be blank. That's where, yeah. So what we'll do next is uh, to create a time series chart. To create a time series chart, uh, so what is a time series chart?
Yep, so this is a time series chart. This is a chart that uh, I'd like you all to try, give it a try and create. So what it's supposed to show is um, the GDP for the top three countries in the world, I mean top three countries in Asia, Singapore, Israel, Singapore, and UAE. Sorry, it's a bit blur. So what I want you all to do is to plot out across the different years the GDP for these three, these three countries. Israel, Singapore, and UAE. Maybe I'll give it a try. Okay, to give you a hint, um, think about what is in the X axis and what is in the Y axis. And uh, why I only have three countries is because I've used a filter. So, so just get a, at least get a chart out that is um, for the GDP across the different years for all countries first. And then from there, it's very easy to get to just three countries. Try to do it uh, without looking through the notes first. Because ultimately, when you go on to create other charts, this will be the same thinking process that you'll be going through. Okay, um, I think what you have now is also the, the aggregated GDP for all countries. So you just, you just have a single line within your chart, right? Um, if you want to have a breakdown for the different countries, so each country is a categorical, country itself is a categorical data. You, okay, maybe I'll show you. Okay, I'll give you a minute more before I show you step one for this first. If you have the aggregated data, aggregated data for all countries, so you only have a single line on your chart and you want to break down to different countries, right? You use the marks to help you distinguish the different countries. So for example, like uh, color, size, label, and stuff. You use that to help you distinguish. So remember just now, um, so what we have here, we have, um, year as in a few which we will be representing using x-axis and GDP as the y-axis which is and both are quantitative data so I have a third column here actually I have a third field here which is country and how do I represent that that is a categorical data Okay, so to do that, right, like I mentioned, um, GDP is in the y axis and here is in the x axis. So, and oh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we just look at, once we look at a particular year. So, right now, if I do this, you are looking at GDP for all countries for all years within your data set. First, I want to filter to the year 2014. Uh, sorry. No, I, I made a mistake. Yeah, this is the GDP for the different country for all the countries across a different year. In this case, uh, why we don't face a problem earlier is because the data set is repeated. Is because um, it's for different years. But now you have broken down your data into different years, so you won't have the case. You won't really encounter. The problem um, with you won't encounter the problem that I shown through here. 
But in this case, you didn't break down the data by year. So it sums up for the different years. But in this case, if you have broken down for the different years, you won't encounter the same problem. Yeah, so this is a GDP for all countries uh, across the different years. And how do I get out the different countries? Like I mentioned, um, country itself is a categorical column, categorical data. And how do I distinguish my different countries? Is uh, I'll use it through colors. I will add all my members first. So what I've done is um, I've dragged country to this column mark. This is to tell Tableau that I want to dis distinguish my countries based on color. But like I mentioned also, um, you can't really represent all the countries within here because you have 150 countries. And whenever you have more than about 10 countries or 10 variables, it's very difficult to distinguish the colors. So uh, next, what I'll do is we only want to look at Singapore, Israel, and uh, UAE. How do I do that? You use the country filter. First, um, you unselect everything first by clicking none. And you type in UAE, Singapore, and Israel. Okay. So firstly, I, I'll just plot out what I want on my X and Y axis. And then I decide on how I want to distinguish my different data. And after that, I apply a filter to only show the data that I want to look at. In other words, uh, let's say if I want to do a comparison between these three countries. Yeah, I only filter to only show these three, the, the GDP for these three countries rather than the whole data set. You only want to show data that is relevant to the points that you want to bring across to your audience and nothing extra. Okay, um, notice that in my chart, so, okay, so change color, for example, Singapore, we normally either use white or red to represent Singapore, right? Uh, so like I mentioned, you want to use something intuitive for the, for the audience to understand your data. You can use colors which you think best represent each data set. For example, um, so if I want to change the color for each individual country, you click on the country. Uh, on the top right-hand corner, there is the edit colors under the downward arrow. So we click on the downward arrow, and you can get this edit colors button. And from there, you can select the color for each, uh, yeah, for each uh, category you're looking at. For example, Singapore, I want red. I'll just choose red. For Israel, let's say if I want green, UAE, I want blue. You can change by default. I mean, you can change the color, yeah, over here. And typically, I don't use other color palettes. Other color palettes, that means uh, you have different choice of colors to choose from. But yeah, it's all up to you how you want to, which colors you want to use. Yep, so here I've changed the colors for my different countries. OK, um, let's say. You will want your data to be self-explanatory. Right now, people can say they can still reference against the your axis to find out uh, what's the value at for this data point. But if you want the label to be permanent, permanently there to do this, so so now I'm at uh, labeling my data points within my chart. You can yeah, you can do a drag and drop to select multiple points at any one time. 
So right now I select three data points at one time. You right click on one of the data points, and then you click on uh, mark label, always show. Okay. So in this case, you sort of you have labeled your graph, your chart, uh. And I'll do the same for, yeah. Everyone with me? Okay. Okay, uh, next I'll go on to create an, another chart. Let's say if I want to create a scatter plot, how do I do that? Maybe you all want to give it a try first before I show you all how to do it. So, so again, think using the same analogy just now, what do you want on your x-axis? What do you want on your y-axis? And How do you want to distinguish your data points? Yep. So right now, what I have here on my x-axis is uh, social support, y-axis is life expectancy. If you're not sure how to do it, remember that there's this show me button, right? So you just select the attributes that you want to visualize and then it will sh tell you what charts, what kind of charts you can create based on the variables you have selected. Yeah, so we'll try and create a similar chart like this, a scatter plot. Okay, um, remember, maybe have a look at one of the data points. Look at the life expectancy value. Does it look correct to you? You hover one of the data points and look at the life expectancy. Does the value of 500, 600, or 700 for life expectancy, does it make sense to you? So, yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, your data set is repeated. What you need to do to make sure you are showing the right set of data. Either to take the average across five years or to filter to only show one of the years for your scatter plot. I guess um, everyone is able to create your own scatter plot, right? Have any issues? If not, uh, I will show you how to do it. If I want to look at. Um, yeah, if I want to look at um, life expectancy against social support. So, okay, uh, to mention briefly also, uh, 
scatter plot, when you create them, generally is to compare two quantitative values. Just now earlier, I think most of them were looking at a quantitative value and a categorical value. But in this case, it's two quantitative value. So different charts, uh, when you have different data type, you create different kind of charts, which I'll cover a bit in a while. And yep, remember to add a filter for year, so whichever year you want to. And okay, so next I will show you how to annotate your data points. For example, um, For example, Singapore, I want to note, I want to show, so just now I show you how to label them, right? But I want to have more details about Singapore. To do that, you do annotate mark. So you right click on the data point that you want to annotate, and then click on mark. And let's say if I use a default one, and click OK. You can shift this around. So what you will do is to, what you will do is to uh, show you more details. So it's easier when you're, you're making presentations. But of course, what you show here should only be information that's relevant to your presentation. If you are not, uh, yeah, for example, if you have um, population data, right now we don't have population data, but if you want to include details about, let's say, right now you are looking at social support and how expected health expectancy. Um, okay, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, let's say if you want to show more data in this uh, annotation, right? You just change it just now over here. Let's say if you have a variable that is uh, population. So, so okay. Uh, so all the variables that were changed by default on its own are all in bold and within this uh, allocator signs, uh, greater than and smaller than signs. And those that are not in bold and not within this um, greater than and smaller symbols, they are all shown here. So this this are not going to change. All these text is not going to change, but all these text will change according to your data set that you have selected. Okay. So for example, I have population and bolded, but what is going to show up here is it's not going. This this is not going to change whichever data point I click on. I mean, uh, whichever one that I annotate. Okay, so everyone is okay with this, right? I'll move on to creating other kind of charts. For example, tree map, tree map, um, work cloud, and bubble chart. Actually, it's really straightforward. If you just use the show me button again, um, if you use the show me button again, what are the variables that you see here? You see, okay, so it's showing the size of the bubble indicate the GDP. And the only other variable you see here is country. So you just need to select these two variables, country and GDP. And then um, you click on the show me button. You can create your bubble chart, you can create your work cloud and your tree map. Let me give it a try.
Okay, I think uh should be straightforward to create a tree map or a bubble chart, but not a word cloud. So I will show you how to do that in a while. But you should be able to create a tree map pretty easily. And maybe to take it just one step further, uh, we want to group the different continents. I mean, group the different countries by continents. This for your tree map. Yeah, so in this case, um, actually group the different countries by their continents. Give it a try. So like I mentioned, over here we have, other than continent, we only have the variables country and GDP. So by right, if you select these two variables and click on show me, you can create sort of a similar chart as this. And to take it a step further, we want to distinguish the different countries by their continents. Actually, in fact, if you follow the okay, so I'll show you how I do it. So let's like say you click on GDP, you click on country. And then over here, you just need to select your tree map. You just make sure you select country and GDP and on the show me feature, it will show you. And from there, you can create your tree map already. If you don't like your tree map, you can use a bubble chart. Okay. And then I want to uh, group my countries by different continents. So you just drag your continent to the, the, the color variable. And again, to filter to whichever country. Yep, so automatically, just now when you selected the tree map, right? They're using squares to represent your data. Let's say if I want to get a word cloud, you just click on text. Under marks automatic, you don't use an automatic setting, you change it to text and you can get your word cloud. And probably there's too many countries within this data set. You can filter down to just 50 countries or 20 countries, up to you. Okay, next. Um, I'll go on to histogram. How do I create a histogram? In the first place, uh, okay, maybe I'll skip my slides a bit. Uh.
Okay. Histogram, maybe look at, so it's uh, this chart in the bottom right. For those who are not familiar, why is it used? What, how do, why do we need a histogram? For example, probably this is a data set that is created by one of the hospital units. And they want to look at the amount, the amount of time taken to complete an operation. Okay. So the amount of time taken to complete an operation, this, are, uh, represent, this is represented in the x-axis. And say, for example, I take 10 minutes to complete an operation. How many, how many patients was I able to perform this operation within 10 minutes? So the number of patients is shown in the y-axis. So histogram allows you to see a spread of how your data is distributed. Is it, say, so in this case, it's quite obvious that most, generally most of your operations takes about 70 minutes, while they rarely take more than two hours. They also, um, most of them don't complete within 30 minutes. So this gives you a sensing of your data. Why, this is why you want to do a histogram. And so if you try to do a histogram for our GDP data set, right? We want to see generally how how much do does each country generate in terms of GDP wise. Okay, so um, to create a histogram, actually it's pretty straightforward. First, uh, you right click on the GDP view over here. You right click on the GDP view over here, and then you create bins, which I will show you. You right click on GDP, create bins. Okay. And okay, so name wise is pretty straightforward. But what is bin? Size of bin, uh, that means the size of bin, that means the size of each column. So right now, um, I think you can't see clearly, but each each point along my x-axis, what is the interval? Is it so? So the size of bin uh, means the interval on your x-axis. What you want to see? For example, in this case, I use an interval of three thousand. Size of bin is of three thousand. That means uh, across each rectangle uh, column, right? Uh, sorry, each yeah, each column, the interval is three thousand in terms of GDP. So this size of bin can vary a lot. If you're talking about age, your size of bin maybe is like in terms of five. In this case, our GDP is much greater, so I'm using a 3,000 as my bin. I'll show you how different size of bins will affect your chart. Okay, so let's say we use 3,000 first as our size of bin. So just now I show you, uh, I mentioned you right click on GDP, create bins, you select this as 3,000, it's just select this as 3,000 and then press OK. You should get this GDP bin in under dimension. Okay, and to, to create the histogram. You just drag this GDP. So to create histogram, your data must be, on the x-axis, it must be this bin that you have created. And you drag this to columns. And in terms of rows, you drag your actual GDP. So, and next, I want to break down by different countries.
So you just drag um, this country dimension to here. It will help you break down by different countries. And why I have a more colorful chart is because I use continent as uh, to group my different countries. And I will set the year filter again to 2014. Okay, so if you manage to create a histogram, it should look something like that. And I mentioned about the size of bin. Right now, as you can see, the interval here. Okay, um, I can't magnify this, but um, if you can see, the interval is all a difference of 3,000. Let's say if I use a smaller bin size. So uh, to change the bin size, you right click on just on the bin under dimension, you right click on it, edit. Let's say if I change it to 1,500. So in this case, you are using a more granular interval. Okay. Right now the figures are all rounded off, which is why, let's say okay, let's say if I use one thousand, if I use a bin size of one thousand, you'll notice that the breakdown is far. I mean, the interval is much smaller, so your data set is more granular, but. Is this useful for analysis or not? You have to, it's something you have to think through. Do you really need such a granular breakdown for your GDP or is 3000 a better size? Ultimately, why are you do creating this histogram? Are you trying to just identify, say, which are the high GDP countries, which are the middle GDP countries, and which are the low uh, GDP countries? Probably the greater the bin size that is 3,000 might be a better fit. Okay, if you go back to this original bin size of 3,000, you notice that, um, yeah, most countries generally fall between a GDP of say 15,000 to say 51,000, with a few exceptions of a few countries which are earning much greater GDP. Okay, so this is for histogram. So next, I will go on to storyboards. So um, storyboards. So I would say storyboard is sort of a more powerful form of a PowerPoint presentation. Because um, storyboard, when you hover over your data points, it will interact with the audience when they look at the data set. I mean, when they, yeah, you will interact. And of course, you still have your filters and stuff. So to do, to create storyboard, actually it's very simple. I will show you how to do it. You just click. So previously, we have created uh, worksheets here. We have created dashboard. The third button is a storyboard. Just click on it. And what you need to do is just to drag. So you have created a storyboard, right? You just need to drag the, the worksheets or the dashboard that you have created earlier. You just drag and drop them inside. And of course, if uh, say, yeah, just now I've I've um, I've labeled, I've annotated my all the country Singapore or my original chart. It will show up over here as well. So whatever you've done on the original chart or dashboard, it will show accordingly. So, um, 
you can have, let's say you can have uh, two dashboards. One is annotated and one, which is why you want to have, you might have want to have two dashboards. One which uh, you want to use inside your storyboard and one that's for your own analysis. So for example, this dashboard is an annotated, right? I want to create a second dashboard that is highlighting another country. Yep, so now I have two dashboards here, but okay. Okay, uh make mistake. So actually these two dashboards, that's my dashboard one and two, are still using the same chart. So in fact you need to create Another second chart, you need to create a second dashboard so that it's highlighting two different countries when you're doing your storyboard. Okay, maybe I'll do it quickly to show you. Yep, so in this case, um, if you want to create a storyboard that is uh, using the same chart or same dashboard, you need to create duplicates of them so that they are not going to interfere with your presentation. Everyone with me? Okay. And um, yeah, so what I've done is Although both of them look the same, essentially I'm using two different charts, one annotated with Singapore, one an annotated with Russia. And then I have, say, okay, let's say,
sorry, actually I was using a different file, so I think some of these earlier configuration that I shown you earlier are it's a bit off. But yeah. So my point is um when you have let's say if you want to compare Singapore against Russia within your storyboard, right? You need to create a chart with Singapore annotated. Yeah. And you need to create a second chart that looks the same but with Russia annotated. And if you is if you're using a dashboard, then you need to create a duplicate of this dashboard also. Okay. And um So I show you how to how how do you bring your charts into this dashboard. After which you just need to add a narrative to your story. Yep. So you will type in text. You will type in text within so-called this grey box narrative, the narrative that you want to articulate through your visualization. So of course this will change according to the narrative that you want to present to the to the user to the to the audience, right? Fonts. Uh, I don't think you can change the font over for this one. Only the font for all this. So notice that you can't really interact on the storyboard itself. Because if you want to do interaction, it's meant to be done on dashboard and not storyboard. Storyboard is meant to present ultimately your findings in Tableau. And of course, you can create more narratives as you need to. So cr to create a new narrative, to create a new sort of sort of slide, you just create a new blank point. And you can change accordingly the narrative that you need to. OK? OK, because um, what I've done is I created two Two charts that look the same. So I drag one chart to this one. So if I want a second, okay. you just drag the other one. Yeah. 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 A bit similar to how you create a dashboard, but for different purposes. Yeah, yeah. So let's say, uh, just now I mentioned you have two charts, right? If you want to compare two charts side by side, first you put them inside your dashboard. Okay, let's say I have this dashboard that I want to compare. Let's say if I want to compare two charts side by side. You put them side by side within your dashboard first and put them into your storyboard. For example, 
right now I'm comparing Singapore against Russia. Of course, there's, uh, I need to fix up some of these things. But so now this dashboard is comparing two countries side by side. And instead of um, Yeah, so I just drag the dashboard as comparing two countries side by side here. If that's what you want to do, you want to compare two countries. So just keep in mind the hierarchy again, worksheets, dashboard, and storyboard, or even the workbook, yeah. Ultimately, you start with a worksheet first, then make changes in your dashboard and ultimately. Do we have any more questions? If not, um, we'll take a 20 minutes break. Be back at about um, 3.45. Yep, we'll have a break until 3.45. Okay, um, I guess everyone is back. Yeah. Yeah, um, I realized that in my, yeah, just get your attention, uh, this is regarding the histogram. I realized that in my earlier presentation, I made a mistake in creating the histogram chart, right? So in the rows, right, just originally, I think I put, um, I think just now I put GDP. This is not correct. Uh, but right for histogram, it should show like, so this is the interval, right? The Y axis is correct. But the, yeah, I mean the X axis is correct. But for the Y axis, it should show the number of records that fall within your each bin. So what you should have here should be number of records. This sum number of records is under measures. It's generated automatically um, each time when you have a Tableau chart. So repeat again. Under rows, you should be using sum number of records. And uh, what does number of records mean? Actually, it's actually it means the number of rows. The number of rows within your data. And what does, in, so with this histogram, what does it mean? So, um, for example, uh, within the bin of 3,000 to 5,999, we have about 20 odd countries, about 26 or 27. 27 countries fall within the GDP range of, wait, wait, should be this one. We have 20 odd countries which fall within the GDP range of 3,000 to 599. To verify that, yeah. So we have s about 16 or 17 countries which fall within the GDP of 5,000, I mean 3,000 to 5,999. About 17 countries which fall within this GDP range. Okay? So take note, uh, I'll make the change on the workbook that I've uploaded online and within the slides as well. I'll upload a new deck of slides based on this. And also the data. Um, Yep, so for those who are interested to understand more about data, you can find it under this URL, World Happiness Report. Okay. One good thing is 
Well, I chose this data set. Is the data is clean? It's easy, so I don't have to do much cleaning. And there's quite a lot of information you can visualize based on this set of data. It's pretty rich, and also pretty recent. Okay. So this is a URL where you can find out more about the data. You can download the data under. I think I, I copy and paste the data from the PDF directly. If you, okay, let me check. Yep, so the data is found under, so on the World Happiness Report page, right? The data is found under online data on chapter two. You can download the data. And if you download the data, this is how it originally looked like. And then um, they have actually more data than what you need. So you have to go through a report and understand Yep, so the ranking for the happiness data set is um, found over here. It's under figure 2.2. So if you go back to the chart, you have to go to figure 2.2. This is where you get all your data for just now the happiness data set. And yep, so I'll leave the details for you to read up on your own. So uh, before I end off, I'll go through some tips on, this is taken from the, one of the Tableau white papers. Tableau, they have a lot of white papers uh, that teach you how to create better charts. This one of which I've taken some materials from. And I have the link at the bottom, you can go to the link itself to have a look. So yeah, uh, for example, if you are looking at a data that is uh, about trends over time. What we have used, what we have done earlier is um, to, for example, um, I have different categories, different indicated by the different colors. Do I want to see the how well they perform over time? Do you want to look at just the individual uh, category, or do you want to look at the overall? data set. So this height over here, it indicates 
the overall funding trend. So this one is the individual trend, and this is the overall trend. Do you want to show the individual data, or do you want to show the overall data? You use two different charts, because for this one, it's very clear when you look at on the y-axis, what's the value for the, this particular trend, this, this particular sector. But if you want to look at overall wise, it's easier to use this chart. So essentially, both charts are using the same variables, but different, but different type of charts to illustrate different points. Next, um, ranking and comparison. Typically, we try to stick to a bar chart. It's um, quite boring, a bar chart, but there's a reason why it has been used so frequently because like I mentioned, two things about bar chart. You can do a comparison between, let's say, Singapore and Saudi Arabia, right? So you know that Singapore is doing at least twice better than as compared to Saudi Arabia. And also, let's say if the x-axis is labeled, right, you can easily tell what is the value for each country, okay? Next, uh, we have correlation. Let's say if you are comparing um, your data set, you have two variables. So in this case, this is uh, sales quantity and sales price. Does it always mean that when you have a high sales price, definitely you will sell lower? I mean, you will sell lesser? Or does it mean that if you have a low sales price, um, you tend to sell more. This will help you understand your data. What's the, what's the, how do they compare against each the two different variables? And is there any particular data that data point that bucks the trend that differs from your, the mean of your data? And. Um, but you need to take note. So typically, scatter plot, we use it to try to find out if there's a possible correlation. But yeah. But yeah. So we, we look at scatter plot to find out if there's a possible correlation. You need to do a proper correlation analysis, and then from there then you can find out if there's a possible relationship between your data as well. This is a bit more towards the statistics side. And another way to um, show how uh, is a correlation between your data. For example, does it mean that, so this uh, in the x-axis is uh, different quarters in across two or three years. Does it mean that when I start increasing, start uh, increasing my sales price, my quantity will decrease? Or is there an uh, opposite relationship? You can use uh, these kind of charts to illustrate your point. And yep, distribution. Just now I mentioned histogram. I showed your histogram. This is a box and whisker plot. Um, box and whisker plot. I'll just briefly explain. I don't use it very often as well. So you can see that um, for those of you who are familiar with Quantau, for example, um, this treatment length, right? That means if uh, say 10% of my patient probably fall within these two bins that will form my first 10% of my quantile. Maybe the last 20% of my quantile, that means, so if I sort it by the length, by the length of the, the, the patient treatment length, if I sort it uh, down a row, so in this case, it's sorted across uh, in the y-axis. If I sort it uh, across the y-axis, how long does it take for me to treat my patient? You can see that bulk of my data fall within 30 to 110 minutes, right? For this, this for histogram. 
So in this case, if you translate it back to here, let's say for urgent case, right? Yellow. Bulk of your data falls between, say, 70 minutes to about 130 minutes. This indicated by this gray box. How, how, this is how I tell you. Lah. So, and then you have the mode and median. If you, if you remember what, what you learned in high school, you have mode and median. This line is, I can't remember exactly, is it mode or median? Yeah, but it's supposed to indicate one of these. You can Google box and whisker plot and understand about, more about this graph. Okay, so next I'll go on to part to whole analysis. So like I mentioned earlier, you, you try not to use pie chart to, for your presentation. For this, this is much clearer if you use a, a stack chart. This is called a stack chart. It still looks like a bar chart, but um, it starts from zero and end, it will definitely end at 100%. And tells you, it gives a breakdown by percentage, generally your data set. So for example, uh, west is indicated by red. Uh, between zero to 15, it's about 40%. And then for east, orange, it's uh, about say 25% because 60 is about, okay, 70%. 70% minus 40%, this is about 30%, and this is another 30%. But, so you can give, you have a rough sensing of the breakdown of your different data set, but with this pie chart, it's very difficult to do that. And yeah, creating effective views. The left and right, the only difference is, one is uh, the words are horizontal. So, um, probably what you do is you put, say, position, player, and year in the rows, as rows. And then, yeah, and the quantity value, you put it as a y-axis, which, uh, which is your column. You know, which is, you know, you put this as your x-axis, which is your column, and you put your position, player, and year as the y axis as the rows in W. This is very difficult to read. Um, okay, so you, you can tell this one is, uh, this chart is very difficult to read. All your data points are all overlapping, right? So what we have here is called a small multiple. So what does a small multiple do? First, it have a breakdown to different countries, your data, and then uh, it breaks down by different category. And then, on top of that, it shows you the sales for uh, each data point, and it tells you whether is it uh, profitable or not profitable. It allows you to easily you get more information out of this chart as compared to this chart. This is a small multiple chart. You can um, search online, you can definitely find sources which teach you how to create this small multiple chart if you need to. Yep. So like we've seen earlier in one of the, our example when we have too many countries, it's very hard to see data clearly. You just want to highlight the, the, the data set that is useful for your uh, presentation to your audience. And last but not least, make sure that um, quite often, especially when you're using uh, raw data, or maybe you have some data from your, your organization, people just name it as, uh, for example, Singapore. I just type SG, but to when you're presenting to foreigners, what does SG mean? It doesn't make sense to them. You need to either clean up your data or you rename it a legend. It's, so because by default, if you name your variable as S, uh, as SG or something, um, 
it doesn't, you show up on the, if you name a variable as SG, you show up as a legend as SG as well directly. So you need to make sure that you rename your legend correctly to, to help your under, audience understand the data. And of course, I mentioned the chart name. Um, when you have a chart name that's intuitive, the, it's very easy for the uh, audience to understand what you're trying to, before, you, before they even look into your data set, they roughly have an idea what you're trying to explain. And labels. Make sure try to label your data set where you want to highlight the, the interesting points. All these are very simple things, but often overlooked. And it makes a lot of difference when you try to explain to your audience your data set. Yep, uh, I've here my references and uh, yep, the, so f some reading materials. Maybe I'll go through um, yep, the, like for example I mentioned, just as shown earlier, the Tableau Gallery where you can get more ideas for your visualization charts. Let's just see more here. So the charts here you can download with Tableau Public, but sometimes you might find Tableau workbooks that you can only open with the Tableau Professional Edition. But on the Tableau Public site itself, all the charts you can download and have a look. So there are, yeah. Okay, so that's all for my workshop today. Do you have any questions? Um, actually, I myself, I don't do it very often. I'm not very familiar. So probably I'll do a Google, yeah. If, uh, maybe I'll do a search as well. Uh, I'll let you know if, yeah, just in case. Yeah, um, first of all, so I'll just say most of these charts, so most of the charts that I create typically is, doesn't look like that. Because one thing is you need to spend a lot of time to make it in such a manner. You need to download a lot of graphics and external images and stuff, and bring it into Tableau, and then to, to, to have such a nice dashboard, la, or I mean such nice charts. But in terms of value add wise, I'm not sure. So I don't do it very often my, myself. But yeah, for interest wise, you might be interested to do it. Do you have any more questions? Yep, if not, uh, that will be end of my session today. Thank you.